Did you ever stop to think how many different kinds of people there are in this world? What one person would consider a thrill might not have any effect at all on another person. With the billions of humans on this planet on which we live, very few people resemble each other in appearance. And within themselves, there's no resemblance at all. Everyone reacts to given situations in a manner all his own, and for a reason that probably even he isn't aware of. People are funny. Emotions or lack of emotions are strange indeed. And it's hard to judge what makes anybody tick. Now, take this young man. He has a look of great concern. He could be possessed with an uncontrollable compulsion Let's follow him. Let's find out. It's a funny feeling, getting off a bus in a town where you don't know a soul, hoping it'll be your town, even before you've seen it, and wondering what the people are like, if they're friendly, if you'll be able to stay. The bus driver said lots of jobs. Getting a job had never been hard. The trouble was finding the right boss, one who'd understand. It was hot, but I didn't mind the walk. Maybe because of the town so homey, trees, everything well kept, and the people so normal. I love leather. I'm Mrs. Stinger. How do you do? You here on a visit, Mr. Smith? Well, no. It... Maybe I can help you. Who are you looking for? Well, no one in... Then you're looking for a place to stay. Well, you needn't go a step farther. Just so happens that I have two very nice rooms. <laughs> I found myself following her. I had no choice. I never seemed to have a choice. Oh, uh, uh, put your bags down here, Mr. Smith, and I'll air out the room. I only need one. Well, of course. But I have one upstairs and one down. You may have your choice. Same price. <laughs> Mrs. Bigger was friendly enough. Maybe just a little bit. That's it. Make yourself right at home. Oh, don't get up, Mr. Smith. Just relax. Thought you might appreciate these. Thank you, Mrs. Bigger. Michigan apples? Mm-hmm. Mmm, good too. <laughs> You'll always find a little snack in the refrigerator. Well, I think I'll go and air out those rooms now. Why did they ever make sirens for bicycles? My, what a picture you make, Mr. Smith, sitting there eating your apple, reading your newspaper. You don't know what a relief it'll be to have a man around the house again. What's going on in the world? I don't know. I was just looking through the want ads to see if there are any jobs I could find. I knew it. I knew it. The first moment I laid eyes on you, I said to myself, now there's a young man that won't let the grass grow between his toes. What kind of work do you do? Different kinds. I've had a lot of jobs. Here's something I'd like to try. Wanted. Sales clerk for menswear department. Apex department store. Apply Mr. H.H. H. Pender. Three o'clock, maybe if I rush right down. Now I... wait just a minute. Settle right back and listen to me, Mr. Smith. I know, Mr. Pender. 
the heat doesn't agree with him. By this time of the afternoon, he'll be very cranky. Why don't you wait till the first thing in the morning? You know, the early bird. Maybe you're right. Thanks, Mrs. Beer. The clean, fresh morning air gave me a lift. By the time I got to the apex, I liked Monroe even more. It suited me, and I was determined to put my best foot forward and try to keep it there for once. Oh, pardon me, can you tell me where Mr. Pender is? He's over in his corner. Mr. Pender? Yes? I came in answer to your ad. Oh. Sit down. Yes, sir. Have you had any experience? Well, frankly, no. Not in a department store. None? <sighs> well, for heaven's sakes, what's the difference? The way things are today, the whole world's in a mess. The drugstores are selling everything but tractors. Ah. Well, you look neat enough. I guess you'll do. Thank you, sir. Uh, first, you'll have to fill out an application. And don't lean too hard on the pen. I expect cleanliness, neatness, and a nice display at all times. And no uh, fingerprints on the glass, please. Yes, sir, no fingerprints. This department has been falling off rather alarmingly of late. You have an opportunity to prove your real worth. It's up to you, Smith, and you alone. All I can offer you is this. Thank you, sir. Good morning, sir. Hi. Is there any particular color or pattern I could show you? Nobody sells me a tie when I see one I like. That's it. I know just how you feel. I, I won't say a word. I have some more here. I'll take this one. This one. Have my change, please. Your change? Well, yes, of course. Oh. Yes, there you are, sir. I'm sorry. Yeah. Good day, sir. Come again. up there as soon as you can. Pretty smart dog. Well, you can't be a dumbbell and be assistant fire chief, can you, Robbie? All right, get a line in that porch there, quick. Come on. Just my luck. The very first day. Standing there like a fool, hypnotized by the fire. Most people take their fires or leave them. I'd have given anything to be like that. And always the last to leave. Even the kids got bored. But me, I had to wait for the last little flame to die. So long, Robbie. Well, I had to face it. I guess I should have told you. I chase fires. I don't want to, but I just do. 
I guess I better get my hat. Smith. Yes, sir. You didn't bring a hat. No, sir, I didn't. I I just want to say thank you for the chance anyway, and I hoped it wouldn't happen, but but it did. It. Don't let it happen again. Discipline, young man. You mean I still have the job? Oh, thank you, sir. Oh, excuse me. Good night, Mike. I'll see you later, buddy. What are you doing? I don't know. I thought about going home. How about me and some of the boys? They're really a swell bunch. Yeah, I'd like to. We usually get together every afternoon. Sounds good. Let's go. Yeah, how's about getting the game? Sure. 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 Sure.
I guess that's all. Oh, this one didn't even get a good start. Well, I guess I better be getting back. Me too. Bye-bye, Robbie. seen you someplace before. I've only been here two weeks. Well, maybe not. I've been away longer than that. I just got back last night. Boy, was I glad to get home. You know, I get awfully homesick. Yeah. I wanted to keep on talking. But there I was, back at the apex. For the moment, I'd forgotten Mr. Pender. But when I walked in, there he was. Not a word, Smith. We'll discuss this later. I just couldn't figure Mr. Pender. It bothered me. He didn't seem the kind of man who'd give you a first chance, much less a second or a third. As I started home, I couldn't help wondering why. Like to drive one home today, sir? No, thanks. Not today. The shoes cars in town. I'm sorry, but soon, I hope. Hey, Robbie, what you doing here? Easy payments. No, I'd sure like to have one, though. Give you a good deal on it. No, thanks. Go on, Robbie. You go on home. Go on, boy. Go on. Nothing down. Sorry. It became obvious I'd made a friend. No matter how hard I tried to shake him, Robbie kept following me, like a private eye. I had the crazy idea he knew all about me. Go on. I can't take you with me. Please. Now, go home, boy. Now, go on, boy. No, I'm just trying to ditch a dog. It worked. See that one? Oh, Robbie, why don't you go home? Go on. Don't tell me you have a dog, Mr. Smith. Oh, no, Mrs. Bigger. He just followed me. I can't get rid of him. Does he have a license? He doesn't even have a collar. I hope he's an orphan. I've always wanted a dog like that. I'm afraid we're out of luck. I think he belongs to one of the firemen. May I put him in the backyard when I make a phone call? Surely. Sit down. Come on, sit down. You can, you can lie down if you want to. You can walk around. Look, Robbie, do anything you want. I'll be right back. Hello? Oh, no, wait a minute. This isn't the dog pound. This is the fire department. Oh, Robbie. Oh, uh, his owner's here now looking for him. What's the address? Okay. Hold him there. Hello, Mrs. Binger. Hello. You're a pretty smart dog, aren't you, Robbie? Yes, he is, except he's a little bit crazy. Is he yours? Yes. You say he's a little bit crazy? Yes, he chases after fire engines. It was awfully nice of you to hold him here for me. I guess I'd better get home with him before Father starts looking for me. Come on, Robbie. Well, goodbye and thanks again. Come on, Robbie. Come on, honey. Come on, Rob. Come on. Come on. Robbie! Come here. Come here, boy. Robbie, come, come over on. here. Looks come like on. you've lost your dog, young lady. Come on. Robbie! Robbie, come here. Mr. Smith, wouldn't it be simpler if you'd walk the young lady home? Uh, and the dog, too, of course. Well, I'd be, I'd be glad to. Thank you. I can't understand. 
understand what's come over him. A bunch at the pool hall were asking about you. I'll bet. They probably want their pigeon back. No, they, they really like you very much. They think maybe you don't like them. It isn't that. Mrs. Binger has a set of books on merchandising and advertising. <laughs> She's making me read them. Well, I guess one of the first rules is to never be late on the job. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Chambers wants to see you. Who's he? The boss. His office is on the third floor. didn't have to make a mountain out of a molehill. Molehill? You gave me another chance, but you warned me it shouldn't happen again. Well, it did. But you don't have to embarrass me by sending me up to Mr. Chalmers. I'm surprised at you, Mr. Pender. The longest leap in the world is the jump to conclusions. I don't know what you're talking about. What is this about Mr. Chalmers? I'm very sorry. I was just told Mr. Chalmers wanted to see me. I thought you phoned her or something. I suggest you go and see Mr. Chalmers then. He's probably planning a fire sale and wants your advice. Come in. Pull up a chair, Smith. No, uh, over here. Closer. That blaze in New York last night was quite a thing. Look, Smith, look at this shot. Uh, well, you can almost feel that intense heat. Boy, I'd given anything to have been there. You're Mr. Chalmers? Yes, I'm Chalmers. You know, I thought it was time, Smith, that you and I had a heart-to-heart -heart talk. Whatever you decide to do with me, Mr. Chalmers, I, I want you to know that Mr. Pender has been very patient. This is the second time that... Oh, I know why. <laughs> First place, Pender wouldn't dare, can you? Because he knows I chase fires, too. You? I was watching you today at the fire, and you were not enjoying it. No, sir. You ran out on your job to go to it, but you didn't get any kick out of it. Oh, no, sir. I hate him. You know, it used to be that way with me. You may not believe it, but I lost seven jobs before I finally hung on to the one that landed me here. I've had nine in the last six months, almost 50 altogether. From one job to another, and one town to another. I've covered the entire eastern seaboard. Oh, my, my, that can't go on. I know it, but, but it does. Oh, you're too nice a young fellow to lose. Let me, let me fight this thing with you. You know, it isn't much of a trick. It's you just missed the first fire. I just can't do it. Oh, I, don't, I don't mean chop it off short, but you, you, know, you sort of taper it off slowly. You go to one fire, and then you miss one. Then you go to another fire, then you miss two. First thing you know, you won't be able to remember which fires you went to and which ones you missed. You're going to have to do it sometime, you know. Either that or flip from fire to fire like a silly moth. It's awfully nice of you to try to help me, Mr. Chalmers, but... Well, no one can do it for you, son. I just wanted you to know that I'm pulling for you if you decide to try. I mean, really try. I'll try, Mr. Chalmers. Good. No one can do more than that. Do you mind if I call you Tom? No, sir. <laughs> Probably just a traffic cop or maybe the mayor late for his golf game. <laughs> Okay, Tom, let's go to this one. No! No, no, this one. Here. Like this. Hey, Mr. Chalmers, I'm stuck! Relax! It's all ready, Mr. Chalmers. Come on, Tom. Get in, Tom. Look out, Stanley. Oh, 
I'm awfully, awfully sorry, Mr. Chalmers. Well, what's the matter, Chief? What... False alarm. False alarm. Oh, listen, <laughs> Herbie, you can't do that. To... I'm a busy man. <laughs> well, that's tough luck, Tom. <laughs> well, how about it? Can I drop you off at your house? Well, I thought about going back to the store. Oh, I'll call Pender and have him check you out. Why don't you take the rest of the afternoon off and, well, think over what we were talking about. Well, thank you, Mr. Chalmers. But if it's all the same to you, I'd like to walk home. All right, son. See you in the morning, then. Now I had two friends, Robbie and Mr. Chalmers. Both of them at least understood. It looked as though my troubles were over. Well, Robbie, I guess everything's going to be all right. Good morning, Mr. Chalmers. Good morning, Tom. How do you feel about things, son? Oh, just fine, sir. Just fine. I know you're going to be all right now. Oh, Mr. Chalmers. Yes? I I have an idea for a tie display. I, I wonder if I could try it. Well, certainly. Go ahead. A new tie display might boost our sales. Thanks. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Smith. Mr. Chalmers said I could try something. Go ahead. Well, I'll need some material. Oh, this is okay. Uh, listen, could you give me about, oh, say, three yards of it? I'll get some wire. What do you think of it? Wonderful, Tom. Thanks a lot. We have managed up until now, Smith, to maintain a certain level of dignity here in the Apex. Flamboyance in any way has never been permitted. I find this little effort of yours most distasteful and obnoxious. This is the tie counter in a department store, not a sideshow in a three-ring circus. But, but Mr. Chalmers Mr. Said Chalmers? I... Yes, sir, he, he said... That's enough, Smith. If Mr. Chalmers has given this project his approval, that is final. Well, I'm sorry, I, I Smith. didn't... Yes, sir. Under no circumstances would I go over the head of my employer or countermand an order from above. This incident is finished. Question, Smith. How far do you intend going? How far do you think my nerves will stretch? I don't know how he got here. Honest, Mr. Pender, I hardly know him. Go on home. Go on home. Go home. Go home. Get down, kid. Out, out, I say. Didn't you hear, Mr. Pender? Go home. Well, if he'll follow you, take him outside. But it's no use. He'll come right back in. He, he's stubborn. Well, then tie him up in the stockroom until closing time. After that, you'll both be free to play. Come on, Robbie. Mr. Pender told me to keep him down here until closing time. Don't pay attention to Pender. Tom, something just dawned on me. Are you always in trouble with Pender? It's becoming chronic. That's what I thought. Look here. That's a bow tie. Now, the lightning bolts were easy to figure out. But this stopped me. It's your bow tie. Mine? Did Pender draw that? Yeah. Well, isn't that a little bit crazy? Subconscious. Unconscious wish. We all do it one way or another. You mean he'd, he'd kind of like to see me hit by lightning? Yeah. I'm studying psychology. And as soon as I learned that Pender was a doodler, I started saving samples from his wastebasket. Kind of interesting, isn't it? 
I don't know. Horace, you, uh, well, it put me on the spot. But this young man is disruptive to the entire organization. Do me a favor, will you? Keep Tom on for another month, and then we'll talk about it again. Well, just as you say, Mr. Chalmers. Thanks, Horace. I just brought Robbie home. Oh, thank you. Say, aren't you the young... Sure, you sold me the ties. Come in, come in. Stay there, Robbie. Let's see, uh, your name is Smith. Yes, sir, Tom Smith. Oh, Mother, this is Mr. Tom Smith. Well, it certainly is a pleasure to meet you, Mr. Smith. The pleasure's all mine, Mrs. Cruikshank. He just brought Robbie home. Well, that's very nice. Are you the Tom who walked Charlotte home yesterday? Yes, ma'am. Well, won't you stay for dinner? Of course he will, Mother. Well, Mrs. Binger is waiting for me. I thank you very much, but I don't think I should. Well, Mrs. Binger and I are old friends. I'll call her and tell her we're kidnapping you. <laughs> <laughs> you certainly took off behind that tie counter. I thought you were quite a sprinter. Were you on your way to the fire? Well, didn't Mr. Pender tell you? No, I just took it for granted. You're right, I... I do chase fires. Uh, that's how I met Robbie. I guess you must have thought it was kind of funny. No, not when you think it over. Now, take me, I'm crazy about fishing, but when you're crazy about fires, it must be kind of tough because you can't plan on those like you do other things. I never thought of it that way. I'm afraid you're going to find kind of slim pickings around here. We had an epidemic of fires the last few weeks, but generally speaking, it's quite a while between fires here. Well, that's the main reason why I moved to Monroe. Well, let me understand you. You mean you came here because we don't have many fires? Yes, sir. I, I looked up the statistics. I should think you'd want to go to a place where they have a lot of fires. I know I would if I was crazy about chasing fire wagons. Well, that's just it, sir. I was reading about people like you just the other day. They have organizations all over the country. Call themselves Sparks. I suppose you're one of them. No, sir. Sparks chase fires for the fun of it. With me, it's different. It's not a hobby. It's, it's like a curse. Something just makes me chase them. Oh, I see. I just can't explain it. Maybe if I could, I might be able to cure myself. Well, I'm just going to call you, Charlotte. Dinner's ready, dear. I brought Robbie home. Your mother was very kind to ask me for dinner. I'm so glad you can stay. Sit here, Tom. Thank you, sir. A few weeks ago, I wouldn't have even dreamed of anything like this. Really sitting down to dinner with a family. It was wonderful, even as a guest. Dear Lord, for this thy bounty, we are truly grateful. Amen. I've never known anyone who's lived in so many cities. Hasn't it been exciting? In a way, yes. Monroe must be a letdown to one with so much experience. Oh, not at all, Mrs. Cochank. This is just the kind of town I've been looking for. Friendly and nice. I'd love to settle down here. I can't truthfully say that I've looked around very much, but I've never regretted staying put right here. Ralph's an old friend of Charlotte's. I think it's their night to go to the show. If that's his idea of amusement, he can keep it up all night. You think he could come to the door and knock like any civilized human being? He's such a child in so many ways. Will you bring Ralph a piece of pie, Charlotte? Yes, Mother. He's probably had three desserts already. Anybody home? Come in, Ralph. Hello. Bring a chair, Ralph. Oh, thanks. Mr. Smith, may I present Ralph Jarvis, Tom Smith. Hiya, Tom. Hi, Ralph. Oh, Ralph, your sweater. Oh, that's, that's okay, Charlie. You had three pieces already. Don't call me Charlie. Why not? Everybody else does. Hey, pin him a boat today and tune a mile for it. Man, does it run smooth. Are you two going to the show? Well, I... I guess so. Are you here on a visit? Mr. Smith works at the Apex. Me? I think I'll be an engineer. I sure like motors. 
Well, either that or Bill Bridges. I thought your father had in mind to take you into his law firm. Ah, uh, no, too much yakety yak, you know. If you two are going to the show, you'd better get started. It's another Western I absolutely refuse. Okay, Queen. We'll pick out a nice gooey one just for you. All right, off with you. Are you going to go, too? No, I, I just want to say it's been a great pleasure meeting you. Oh, well, thanks a lot. Well, I'll, uh, I'll be seeing you. Come on, Charlie. Good night, Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, Charlotte. Did you have a nice time, dear? Just wonderful. What picture did you see? Oh, I don't mean that. I mean before Ralph came. It was so nice to have someone to dinner with such a gentleman. Wasn't it funny when Tom wouldn't say a word after Ralph came in? Just let him ramble on and make a fool of himself. Why, well, Charlotte. You'll find as you grow older, dear, that first impressions of people are not always right. They may have some little quirk or other that goes against you. It doesn't do any harm to make friends slowly. I know you're talking about Tom, Father. I heard him tell you about chasing fires. Tom chases fires? He has his little problem. He's lost several jobs because of it. Now, Charlotte, how many times have I heard you say that Robbie's crazy for doing exactly the same thing? That's different. You can't reason with a dog. Besides, we still love him anyway. And you intend to reason with Tom? Yes. Charlotte. And you feel that one year of elementary psychology qualifies you to start picking an intelligent young man to pieces? Well, I can get advice. Frank, what do you think of these? Look all right to me. You know, I went to this picnic last year and I thought the entertainment almost ruined it. Except for that song he heard. Remember the one about Cassidy and O'Halloran and O'Rourke and all them fellas? <laughs> Why, you almost had me doing a jig. <laughs> sure, it's blarney you're feeding me, but I love it. <laughs> Shake the hand of your Uncle Mike and the hand of your sister Kate. <laughs> Come on, man, sing it. Don't be so stingy. Come on, I like the song. Come on. Three years ago, this very day, I left the port of Cork. And on a ship from Old Erin's Isle, I landed in New York. With many a friend to greet me there, and a stranger on the shore. But I carried an honest Irish heart, and fortune came galore. Now here I am back again, on dear old Aaron's Isle. My friends, they meet me on the quay, and they greet me with a smile. For there's many a face that I surely forgot, but I was so long away. But me mother, she introduces all, and this is what she say. Shake hands with your Uncle Mike, me boy. Shake hands with the sister Kate. And this is the girl you used to swing down on the garden gate. Shake hands with all of your neighbors and kiss the Collins all. You're as welcome as the flowers of May in dear old Tanigal. Well, they gave a party when I got back and they came from near and far. And the roads were lined for near a mile with Irish Johnny cars. The whiskey flowed like buttermilk to fill our hearts with joy. The piper played an Irish reel to greet the Yankee boys. So, tomorrow off to church I'll go. And wedded I will be to my pretty little Colleen. Sweet Biddy McGee, for Biddy was true and faithful to her Barney or the sea. And we'll join the harp and shamrock with the stars of liberty, thanking Brannigan, Flanagan, Milligan, Gilligan, Duffy, McGuffy, Malacky, Malone, Rafferty, Lafferty, Donnelly, Connolly, Dooley, O'Hooley, Muldani, Malone, O'Hona, Cohona, Lanahan, Flanahan, Fagan, O'Hagan, O'Hulan, Flynn, Shanahan, Manahan, Fogarty, Hogarty, Kelly, O'Skelly, McGinnis, McGinn. Shake the hand of your Uncle Mike and the hand of your sister Kate. And I'll hug and I'll squeeze as much as I please the girl in the garden gate. We'll invite all the neighbors to the wedding great and small. And we'll live content, for we'll pay no rent in dear old Donegal. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Charlotte. May I come in? Have you got an appointment? I have a floor show every noon? Oh, he's my public. That was a song I sang at the picnic last year. I have a little problem, Frank. Well, can I eat my sandwich while I listen? Sure. It's about somebody who can't help doing something. You were pretty smart in psychology, so I thought you could help me. Is this a man or a woman? Oh, a man. And he has some sort of a compulsion. Maybe every time he sees a big window, he has to throw a rock through it, or when he hears a train, he has to watch it go by. 
Yes, something like that. How old is he? 40? 20? 20. Say, who's, who's writing the story anyway, you or I? Go ahead, you're doing just fine. <clears throat> well, is he married? Look, you're gonna have to make up your mind because it makes a lot of difference. How? Well, if he's married, it's quite a problem. Yes, let's make him not married. All right. Here we have a young man with a compulsion. Not married. That's pretty easy. Oh, he suffered quite a lot, though. At 20? <laughs> what is this, a soap opera? No. Generally speaking, Charlotte, your hero's problems will be over when he gets married. Married? Well, yes. What kind of a romance is he mixed up in? None. You'll never sell this story. He's getting interested in this girl, though. Oh, no, that's better. You see, it's always good to keep your hero alive. You, you said he'd be all right when he got married. Why? Responsibility. We all change when we assume responsibility. You see, these little, little, uh... Quirks? Yes, quirks. Well, they seem pretty big until something real comes along. Then they, they blow up like balloons. Now, the best solution would be to marry him off. Otherwise, you'd have to use a substitute. Substitute? Like what? Well, let's see. He has a married sister. For some reason, she has to go on a trip. But she has a baby. She leaves the baby with him. Hello, Charlotte. Hello, Tom. Hello, fella. How are you? Tom, I'd like to ask a favor of you. Well, let's sit down, shall we? You lie down, boy. Lie down, Robbie. I've been very worried about the dog next door to us. He's acting so strangely, and I know it's an awful lot to ask, but I wondered if you would sort of take care of Robbie. Mrs. Binger said she'd keep an eye on him while you're at work. I'd be very glad to, Charlotte. Of course, when you go to the picnic Saturday, I can come over and sit with him. Picnic? Yes, the one the store is giving for the employees and friends. I've heard they're lots of fun. Do they have it every year? Yes, everybody in town tries to get an invitation. The employees do the inviting? Yes, the married ones usually ask another family. And the single ones just take somebody. Oh, then I, I couldn't ask your mother and your father and you to go. Oh, Mr. Chalmers always asked mother and father. He handles the insurance for Apex. Well, then, would you like to go with me? I'd love to. What's the matter with him? He wants you to go with him. Hey, Robbie, come back here. I better go get For a boat ride? You too, Tom? Sure. Swell, come now on. You be careful, Ralph. Hey, you better take off your shoes and socks. Okay. Come on. Hey, Tom, get some coats, will you? Sure. Somehow I knew this wasn't Charlotte's idea. But I couldn't blame Ralph either. Three's still a crowd, even on a picnic. Oh. Do you have to 
shout like that, make a spectacle of it? But what is it? What do you want? I just wanted to know where you were. <laughs> I was just talking to Mr. McVeigh. McVeigh? Uh, yes, he's in men's underwear. Well, I should hope so. Georgie, really? Well, how are you, little lovebird? <laughs> oh, very well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Tom. Hello, sir. Why, Tom, I thought you were going boating. Well, so did I for a minute. Just wait until that young lady gets back. Well, it wasn't Charlotte's fault. Ralph sure has that motor trained. Everybody having a good time? It's wonderful, wonderful. Better relax now, because there'll be a lot of doing later on. <laughs> Enjoying yourself, Tom? Oh, yes, sir. You do me a favor, will you? Keep your eye on the men's dressing room. The fireworks are stored in there. You know, children playing? Yes, sir. Fine. Anybody in there? Hey, you, come here. You want me, sir? I don't want you playing in here. I'm not playing. I'm looking for safety here. A dull picnic. It's a honey for its size. Just imagine a fire with fireworks. I lost my clothes in that shack. How about it, Mr. Chalmers? Just make your claims to my friend, Mr. Crookshank. Oh, no. no. Yes, there's a clause in the policy that takes care of outside activities of the apex. No. Yes, you might as well enjoy it, Hal's on you. <laughs> Arson? <laughs> that doesn't make sense, little shack like that. Look, firebugs don't make sense. They're out for excitement. What makes you think it's arson? This. Oh, that might be something from the fireworks. Oh, no. I've already checked. Gentlemen, we might as well face it. There's a firebug in town, and he's probably right in this store. Oh, now, wait a minute, Chief. Uh, I grant you, you might start an investigation, but... Start it? What do you think I'm doing here? I started this this morning while you fellas were still pounding your ears. Now, don't get in an uproar. We're willing to cooperate. Uh, sure. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just mad, I guess. I'd like to meet the young man who discovered the fire. I understand he works here. That's right. Send up Tom Smith, will you? How'd you happen to find this? Well, not as so many of the fellas lost their wallets. I kept one of my boys there all Saturday night, and yesterday, when we started going through the ashes, there it was, along with the nickels and dimes. Well, you've certainly got a lot of suspects, practically everybody but the women and children. What a thing to happen. Just when I'm getting ready to start collecting my pension. Come in. Good morning, Mr. Chalmers, morning, Mr. Crookshank. Oh, good morning, sir. I'm sorry about that water. It's just that I get a little excited. I guess I'm not too good around fires. I guess it would be better if I stayed away. I see. You're better at watching them. Yes, sir. You discovered the fire, didn't you? I think so, sir. Did you see anything suspicious at all? Suspicious? No. What were you doing in the building? Me? Yes, you. Mrs. Woodruff and two or three other ladies saw you come out of it. Oh, yes, I, I was down the lake with Robbie. When I saw the fire, I started yelling. Then I went into the dressing rooms to see if the kids were all right. Hmm, I see. Would it surprise you if I told you that the fire was not accidental? It wasn't? Thermite pencil. Well, thermite's awfully hot. The metal would have fused more. This looks more like magnesium. Oh, excuse me, I didn't mean to butt in. You're very right, young man. <laughs> no. 
That will be all, Mr. Smith, and thank you very much. Goodbye. Goodbye, Tom. Well, that didn't take long. He knows quite a bit about something that isn't his business. Oh, that's just a hobby with him. Well, it may be a hobby with him, but it's my bread and butter. Thanks. right here and now that Tom Smith is the man we want. The big news tonight is still the firebug. Authorities claim his identity is known, but an arrest must be backed up by proof. All citizens are urged to be alert, but careful. The firebug is intelligent and clever, may be dangerous when cornered. Again, be careful, but report anything suspicious at once. Programs this evening will be... At... Frank around? No. How about getting in the game? Well, we were playing partners, but run them, weren't it? Well, the deuce for me. My break. Get away. Where are you going, Dave? You're shot next. I'm just going to get a fire extinguisher. They tell me this guy's pretty hot. Well, aren't you going to play? No, thanks. I, I just forgot something. Anybody home? I think I'll go upstairs. Charlotte, please. All right, Ralph. Come in, Ralph. Hiya. Hello, Ralph. Hello, Charlotte. What about a movie? It's Gregory. No, thank you. Did you uh, hear the radio a while ago? No. It's about the firebug. Everybody in town knows his Tom. Knows? Sure. Everybody can be wrong. Oh, yes, they can. Especially those who hope it's true. I'm sorry, Mother. I think I'll go to my room. But... Sit down, Ralph. Sure you don't want a little soup? Just maybe a teeny weeny little piece of pie. Oh, Tom, you should eat something. I couldn't. I feel kind of sick. Don't let it worry you. It doesn't make any difference what people say, as long as we know it isn't true. And I thought everybody was so friendly. They'll make it up to you when the truth comes out. I don't know if I'll be here then. Charlotte? What? Of course I will, Mrs. Binger, right away. Yet, Mrs. Binger. No. He's upstairs packing. 
I'll send him down to you and Charlotte. Don't let him go. I'm not running away. How could I be? I haven't done anything. Well, what's the use of batting your head against a stone wall? Everybody isn't against you, Tom. I know, Charlotte, but why should anyone even bother about me? Even with trouble like this, I still can't keep away from fires. When you come right down to it, it really is my fault. I act like a firebug. I hope you stay, Tom. I know everything will be all right if you do. But wherever you are, the next time you hear a fire engine, open this and read it before you run after it. Everybody in town thinks I did it. I don't want to quit. Maybe if I just stayed away from the store for a while, at, at least until he's caught. Well, they don't seem to be having much success. He's pretty clever. They'd probably have much more luck if they just stopped thinking I was guilty. Tom, I had a thought. I don't know if you like it or not, but uh, why don't you leave town for a while? But well, Mr. Chalmers... No. Now, wait a minute, Tom. This thing may go deeper than we realize. Whoever is starting these fires will continue to set them as long as you're here to take the blame. Now, if you leave, they'll no longer feel safe and quit. Of course, that's only a theory, but... Don't you see some... <laughs> All this is being done by, by some poor, unfortunate soul who can't help himself any more than, well, any more than you can help going to fires. Perhaps if you left, you'd be doing both him and the town a favor. I couldn't do it, Mr. Chalmers. Something's happened that would make it just look like I was running away. And it would be worse for me if the, if the fires did stop. You say something's happened? You mean you met a girl? Yes, sir. Well, of course, you'll have to consider her. Tell you what, Tom, suppose you go to work in the stockroom for a while, and I'll let you take care of everything. Thank you, Mr. Chalmers. Well, that's all right, Tom. What's the matter? Don't you feel well? I just thought of something. What? Mr. Chalmers has been so nice, just like a father. Well? I didn't tell you what he said. He wanted me to leave town. He said some poor, unfortunate fellow would go right on setting these fires as long as I was under suspicion. Don't you see? He was talking about himself. Chalmers is the firebug. Tom, you're not trying to start another rumor, are you? Well, it makes sense, doesn't it? Let's just say it's possible. I love you, Tom. If you love me, you will not go to this fire. All my love, Charlotte. 455J, please. Hello? Charlotte? This is Tom. No, I haven't gone away. Yeah? I read your letter. Yes, and I love you, too. Yes, there's a fire. Listen. And I'm not going. Of course I want to see you. Yes, dear. Okay. Goodbye, Charlotte. Goodbye. Goodbye. Frank, I'm cured. I don't want to go to the fire. Well, what do you know? Charlotte, a wonderful example of shock therapy. Huh? Oh, it's fine, fine. It might even become permanent. Well, come on. We better straighten up a bit. Huh? Come on, snap out of it. Clean up a bit.
Where's my letter? I put it right there. Here it is. That's funny. What? This isn't a doodle. It's more like a plan. Yeah. How about a ride home? No, Frank. I think I'll walk. Well, see you tomorrow, Tom. Good night. Good night. You'd better wipe the lipstick off, Tom. I never thought I'd feel like this. Everything's going to be wonderful, Tom. It'll all work out. I know who the firebug is. Aren't you glad? No. It's the worst thing that ever happened to me. Why? It's Mr. Chalmers. Oh, that can't be. Well, that's what Frank said, but I have proof. You recognize it? I don't know anything about plans. Well, think of a factory or a big building. These lines mean water, probably a river. This might be a smokestack. There's a Monroe paper factory. That has three smokestacks. And this could be... Yes. This would be the fence, and these would be straw stacks. What are you going to do, Tom? You must think about yourself. I'm going to tell Mr. Chalmers that I know. Then maybe he'll stop. Do you know where he lives? Yes. Will you drive me there? All of a sudden, I felt alive. Charlotte was right. I had to think of us. Just as I figured, Mr. Chalmers was out. They said walking. There wasn't a moment to lose. I had to make a phone call to the fire department to warn them without letting them know it was me. They got there just as we pulled up. I saw someone trying to get away. This was the one chance to prove my innocence. I had to catch him before the fireman caught me. Counted on the plant guards. Good old Robbie. I hate to think what would have happened if he hadn't shown up. Wait! Robbie's got someone by the foot over there. As the guard moved toward Robbie, I wanted to get out of there. How could I face Mr. Chalmers again? What could I say to him? But when he dragged the man out, Mr. Pender! Horace Pender! Are you the firebug? Young man, I owe you an apology. Thank you, sir. Mr. Chalmers? I know something. Smith do it. That's what you were leading up to anyway. Oh, so that's it, huh? You were afraid of losing your job. That was silly of your pender. He's just a kid. Where did you learn all about magnesium pencils, anyway? From a book in your library. After all, I gave you a few happy hours, you and your fires. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you, 
the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. for a son of them. Oh, I forgot my pride. Oh, caught the bouquet. Well, I guess that means he's going to be married next. I wonder if it will cure him, too.